Yo, what's going on guys? Today we'll be taking a look at which summons to reduce and which summons to keep. This is gonna be for wind, light, and dark. If you first time watching this video, you may wanna watch part one in the description down below in which we look at fire, water, and earth. Before we start the video, I'm going to start off with my criteria on each summon. There'll be three different tiers. We have reduce for summons that generally you can just throw away. Um, I will talk about each summon individually, but generally anything in the reduce section can be thrown away and reduced for quartz. Then we have hold. These summons are summons that have potential to become very busted in the future with a four star generally or if they have some viability and very nice areas of the game. And now we have keep generally anything that's limited or has extreme value and majority of content. So that's the criteria we're gonna go with. And with that, let's get right into the video. So with that, first we'll be taking a look at the wind element. Now we're gonna be starting off with this thing. I don't know how to pronounce it. Quetzalcoatl or something like that. Doesn't really matter. I know I pronounced it wrong, but generally it's garbage. Um, it does have a possibility to get a four star, which it currently does not have. And since it seems to be more defensive summon, it does have a chance of getting armor, but there's already Rose Queen in the element, which already does things like that and give revitalize and defense boost. So there's no real point of keeping this thing around you can safely reduce that one. But it do know it does not have a four star, so keep it in mind. Next we have Siren. This is another uh, pretty awful summon right now. It comes with charm. I don't know what it can get, maybe entice in the future. Uh, it doesn't have a four star at the moment. If you're really a hopeful person, I would keep them around, but Generally, you can just reduce it. Just know that it does not have a four star at the time of recording this video. It can always be power boosted to be broken. It, it's a gotcha game, right? So who knows? Next, we have Nejaha. Now this one um, does have a four star, uh, very lackluster. It does have a fire attack and one attack boost. Pretty mediocre. Um, <laughs> it doesn't really have much viability anymore, unfortunately. It was used at a time though for a way to boost health, but with the primals and the uh, magnus having better HP boosting weapons, it's just better off running that. Now we have Garuda. Now Garuda got completely power crept by um, Tmot Mal, not Tmot, Tmot uh, Four Star. This used to be the, the main way to get mirror image on your team. Um, honestly, you can just run Tmot Omega, so. Four star of that, get the same effect. Not worth keeping this thing around anymore, so you can just safely reduce that one. Next, we're looking at Zephyrus. It's a limited summon, so, or my fault, non ticketable summon. Since it's not ticketable, I would recommend keeping this. Also, it comes with the spell, which is very good. Now we have Roach Queen. Now, Roach Queen is a little bit special, right? She does have a very unique buff. It is dispellable, unfortunately, though, I believe. So it's still very good, though. Um, it could be useful in harder content. I wouldn't call her a definite keep, but if you're like a person who want to like have a defensive option, it's not a bad keep. If you're not dying for quartz, I would, I would keep this around. I would not prioritize it as a reduce. It could be useful in harder content in the future, mainly the six dragons I'll be looking at. Uh, we have a loading problem here, thank you. Okay, now we have Morigna. Now Morigna is the, the bunkle for wind, therefore I always tell you to keep your bunkles. They could definitely be very useful in the upcoming high dragons. Now c -Tech. now this summon was actually very useful on release as back then, a gnat was the main way of getting wind attack up at the summon. And then this one came out with 90 at, at it, 90 at base up to 130, depending on the amount of enemies. So it was actually good at one point, though um, with power creep and Grimnir coming out, 
it did fall off quite a bit. The one turn of guaranteed TA is not really worth it anymore in Wind. When you have units like Neo and Monkey, you have more than enough TA, so I would recommend just reducing it now because it doesn't really have much viability, unfortunately. After that, we have Raphael. Now, Raphael is another non-ticketable summon for Wind. I would keep this. Generally, all non-ticketables, you should keep them. So, But it's also the Primark as well, which is more reason to keep it. Now we have Garula. Now, this summon is not awful. What it sports is a very slight chance of clearing all foes' charge diamonds. If that reminds you of something, it still reminds you of Typhon. Now, this has a possibility to be nearly as good as Typhon at a four star. So I would keep it around just in case that it does get the guaranteed clear all diamonds. It's, it would not be bad at all. So for that reason alone, I would keep it around just in case. We have another non-ticketable summon here, Grimnir. Now Grimnir is limited, I mean non-ticketable, so automatically I'm gonna tell you to keep it. Also, it's one of the best uh, call effects for a shield. 10k shield is very strong. Also, it gives you a little bit of damage as well, which is not bad at all. Now we have Freyr. Now this is, I believe, the first time I'm ever telling you to keep a normal summon, I believe. I don't remember if there's any other normal summons that's not a bunkle that I recommended you keeping. But this one is definitely a keep. It's a very strong call. It has a plethora of buffs from attack, defense, CA damage, uh, debuff success rate, and it comes with a veil at max limit break. So it's very, very, very strong. And it's callable turn three, turn one if you're wind. Very good summon for bursting and very meta for chaining it with Shiva. Next we have Hamsa. Now this is the spell summon. Um, the one problem with it is that it does fight with Zephyrus and it's Ellie. So if you don't have that summon, this is your option. But if you do have Zephyrus, you can reduce this one and just use Zeph. So it depends on what summons you have but I would keep it if you don't have them. And if you do have them, you can reduce this one. Just know that I believe this one has a shorter cooldown at max limit break of six turns while Zephyrus is seven. So if you're looking for the more uptime on your spell, you'll have more value on this one. And now we on Anat. Now with when Magna being so good, generally I would tell people to just reduce this one, but, um, for off Ellie content like Ultimate Bahamut, it is useful to have a Nat just in case that there's no Grimnir in the lobby. As running double team on is not recommended. So if there's um, no Grimnir, this is your alternative option for people who are looking for the element attack boost. So keep that in mind that if it's just an option for people who don't have Grimnir in the lobby. You don't you don't need to keep it, but you can reduce it if you if you so willing to have or if you have Grimnir you don't need it then now we're at Demon Bream now this summon is very special right it has the ability to lower when allies health by 25 upon calling it and it's callable turn one now if a midi if a midi ever become the meta for wind this could be a very viable summon for wind users if they really want to get to low health and keep a good damage boost Currently, it's not really running in meta outside of Bahamut high level, and even there, it's neglectable. So, um, it really depends on if you want to keep it for the future. Also, it can always get a lot better with a full limit break as well, as it's still only a three star. So, it's an, it's something I would keep. I would not prioritize reducing this, but it's not something you need to keep. So, it really depends on you as a player if you're really dying for quartz, if you need to reduce this or keep it. And with that, I believe we're done with Wind. Um, so let's get on to the next Ellie. Now we are on to the Light element. And Light is in a hard place because it does have quite the plethora of very good summons. So when we talk about Light, you'll be seeing more keep and hold than reduce just because Light generally summons are good, unfortunately. 
first summon we'll be looking at is Vortex Dragon. Now this dragon has actually been a meme and was very hated on, myself included, um, for quite a while. Upon 4 star, it did gain a very two very important debuffs, Light Defense Down and Fire Defense Down. Fire Defense Down is not nearly what it's used for, but what it's mainly used for is it's a Light Defense Down. Though with the introduction of Kumbera, it's not nearly as viable as it used to be, but it's still seen in higher level content as a way of hitting Defense Down with certain team comps, those that do not really run Kumbera. So it's more used for a solo thing than a group content. So if you're more looking at a solo player and you really want to solo the higher uh, end game bosses with light, this is something you may want to keep around just in case. Next we'll be looking at Apollo. Now Apollo is still the only, well, not the only one, but it's the only refreshable veil on call. The other one being Freyr at max limit break does also apply veil. I believe there's more now, but um, Apollo was for the longest time the main way of getting Veil. Vale. Veil vale has lost its relevancy over time due to the way bosses have been really about. They don't have a lot of... Uh, Veil vale doesn't last long enough to be worth running now because of how frequently bosses run into a trigger and your trigger can instantly remove your Veil vale in a second, making it gone and wasted rather quickly. So because of the trigger mechanic being so common now, um, Veil is not nearly as, as good as it used to be, but Apollo's always had the chance of becoming more relevant with more released content. So it's not something I would reduce instantly, but I would keep it around just in case. You never know where Apollo can become very viable and something you need. But generally right now, it's not very viable in current content. Now we have Odin. Overhyped. This summon is overhyped. Please stop calling the summon good. This summon is very, very, very lackluster. The 25 and off a 20% defense down is not even capping or combining with Mist to cap. It takes a while to call. The crit buff is very mediocre. It's a good stat stick, but that's all it is. That's a good stat stick. You can reduce this one. Don't think about it. It's not that great. Stop overhyping it. Please, thank you. You, you could tell that I had some feelings on that one because I've seen it been overhyped for too long and it's really not that good of a summon. It's mediocre at best. Best. Best, best case scenario. Um, Lucifer, the first non-ticketable light summon we're talking about. As it's being non-ticketable, I recommend keeping it. Uh, it's very strong, has a five star, one of the rare summons in the game to have a five star currently and that alone gives it a prestige stats that is just unprecedented currently in the game. Primals are getting close there with the four star, but they're not there yet. But this man has a ton of viability, especially in harder content. 3K heal is very good, so not bad guy at all. Definitely recommend keeping it, and it's a very good, very good summon. Speaking of healing, we have Grand Order, the first non-ticketable that's on the hold. Grand Order is in a really weird place. This summon came out quite a while ago. Unfortunately, has never gotten a four-star release, though people are still praying like Newface. <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> but uh, with that, um, this summon is not awful, but with the release of 4-star Lucifer healing for 3,000, it did lose quite a little bit of its viability as the main way of healing on light with the, the call effect. It's still okay, because Drain is actually better than a one-time heal um, when you run a midi. So Drain it has more value if you're running a midi build than running a normal build. But generally, that's not too often, so... It really depends. Um, I would keep it. I would keep it. It's not. It's not ticketable. So you know, it's very, very hard to get. But no, that's the closest right there to a hold on. Cause currently, it has not much viability thanks to Lucifer. Now we have another not ticketable, and we have Zeus, the Primal of Light. It's Primal. It's your enabler to making a new grid. So keep it. Now we have Hector, the Light Bunkle. 
it's a light buncle it's going to, it's probably going to get more viability in um in the six dragons upcoming not to mention that it does have the ability to go with, against skyfall and ultimate bahamut high level as well makes it okay i'll keep it i mean i was gonna tell you to keep it regardless but those are the options now here's another ticketable summon that's very very strong thor the god the one and only ultimate bahamut's worst enemy and they nerfed it so hard and far because it was too powerful thor is a monster not only is the call effect really good Upon four starring it, it becomes one of the best call effects for light, sporting a 50% uh, light bonus damage for two turns. Very, very good. I would definitely keep this. It's very, very, very good in pretty much 99% of the content in the game. So, not bad. Not bad at all. Though it's not used at the main or sub. Just, just in case people wondering. Generally, it's not. Now we have Aphrodite. Now this summon is a flip of a coin. This summon can be god tier or it could just be mediocre. Upon four starring, you do have the ability to instantly gain all of your skills if you're running it as a main or a sub, but you have to call it twice, I believe, which is very unfortunate. Um, generally, I don't recommend maining or subbing this, but what this does give is a heal not nearly as strong as Lucifer, I believe the heal is only 1,800. Then it also gives you charge bar gain, which is very good. Um, though generally in light comps, charge bar is not that important. Though if you're running song, it's kind of viable, but it really depends on what comp you're running. But what it really has though, is the ability to reset all your light skills. Um, which is very, 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 well not light skills, but all your skills can be reset. It's a slight chance, but that slight chance can be a big thing. Um, generally, you can just run Kirin, but for people who like, you know, to play a little gambling game, it's kind of fun to run it. I, I ran it before. Um, it's, it's fun. I like it. But it really depends. It's not that important to keep. It's RNG, generally. So now we have this dragon, um, Almadra Tech or something like that. Um, or Modulek, whatever. Um, this dragon has one thing with bonus light damage. If you saw how much prey I gave to Thor, it's going to be the same thing with this dragon. Currently, it's not actually a four star. It's a three star, which means that it has potential to even become more strong for light. And with that alone, I tell you to keep it. Uh, it already has a good call effect. So the fact that it already has a good call effect and it's a three star, it's a good keep. Um, I think I have it in hold, don't I? Uh, th this is a keep. Keep it. <laughs> keep it. Very good. Very good. So now we have Hal and Mal. Hal and Mal, um, they're another non-ticketable summon. That, is this one being non-ticketable? It's more than enough for me to recommend keeping them, but they also have a very unique sub aura where they do boast your team's double attack. It applies to all elements, which is pretty cool. Um, 10% boost at max limit break. Good for Magnus, but generally don't have multi-attack. So, I would keep it. Keep it. Now we have Magus. Now, this summon is utterly useless because Lucifer exists. Even if this summon came at max limit break, which it does not, um, it, it's useless because it's only 100%. At one at match limit break is 120, and they're fighting against 150. They have no chance. Just use Bahamut or Lucifer. I mean, use Lucifer. And if you're like, oh, I want to use like uh, Magus Zeus, don't do it. You're wasting your time. Just run Light Magna, Light Magna, and run Lucifer. You'll be fine. Don't overthink it. This is not something you should be keeping. It's something you should be reducing. The call effect is also garbage. So uh, I don't recommend keeping this one. This one can be erased. <laughs> it can be erased. <laughs> so you don't worry about that one. And now we have the Primark Metatron. I don't know why this is a Primark. It makes no, they, they gave up. They were like, bro, we need to make a light summon. Metatron, whatever. <laughs> I don't know why this is a Primark. It should not be a Primark, but we do have Metatron. And it's the, a non-ticketable summon for light. Therefore, keep it. 
very good and it has a very strong call effect as well so that's light uh let's move on to dark and now we're on to dark but that's one of the smallest pools of summon so it's to be rather quick now first we'll be looking at satan please don't demonetize this uh youtube but we'll be looking at satan satan is one of the highest stats for a three star summon in the game therefore it could be probably the biggest stat stick in the game upon getting a four star but call wise it's not really that great it does have a chance to blind i don't know if it's gonna be a a good four star if it ever gets a four star but just the fact on the high stats alone can make it the biggest stat stick in the game so if you're a guy who want to have big numbers i'll keep it around for the future currently bahamut has the high stats in the game and speaking of bahamut we have bahamut a non-ticketable dark summon big numbers high damage five star oh <laughs> um bahamut's a monster this summon is great Upon getting a five star, it's a callable turn six. So you can call it every six turns. Very good, very, very insane. I can't believe they added that. Bahama is a monster. Um, keep it, keep it, keep it. Stone it actually, it's great. Now we have my baby, Dark Angel Olivia. <sighs> I wanted this summon for the longest time. Due to the great unique skill of lowering dark allies skilled by one turn it used to be a viable way for conjunction to get a little bit more um value but due to the fact it was only really used for bahamut high level with dark it lost viability now you have options like kieran which kind of makes this summon irrelevant especially when kieran is dark meaning that dark has options to call it out a little bit quicker than other elements so unfortunately dark angel olivia has lost all her viability and no longer it's really used um unfortunately she's a babe though love her now we have lich now this one it's it i won't mention it did have viability it death grace does have the healing aspect upon damage over time so it, it could be useful if there's a boss that does damage over a time through a debuff but generally i would recommend you not needing it um you also have the option of running dark uh dark john's weapon as a main hand if there was ever a situation where this did happen so you do have options outside of running this so i would generally if you're looking for dark quartz you can reduce lich and you'll be okay now we have Hades, another non-ticketable, this the Dark Primal. Now this summon is the key to building your Hades grid, um, if you want to become, you know, <clears throat> Hades Lord. So um, this guy is a must keep, this being non-ticketable alone makes him highly viable, uh, valuable. So that's alone, it's good enough. Now I'll be looking at Anubis, Anubis, the scales, <laughs> um, He's the dark bunkle, therefore he has viability on this being a bunkle with the upcoming high dragons. He will be useful, hopefully, thankful, maybe. We'll, we'll see when they come out, but just having the 60% damage cut is very viable for three turns, very strong. Now we have Typhon. Now this summon is amazing. It got a four star that blew people minds. First off, it has the ability to re recall all foes charge diamonds. I said recall, but to, to remove them. Um, and upon having a four star, it gains the ability to give your team 100% charge bar. Um, this is very good at it boosted by charge bar speed up. Therefore, characters like Octo would gain more, Vajra buffs, and stuff like that. So Typhon, it's amazing. I would definitely keep it. It's very strong. You want to get this maximum break as quickly as possible to get it to four star as it's very, very good. And also very core upon most, if not most of them, um, ultimate Bahamut high level solo. Very, very good. Now we have Notch. Now this is another uh, summon that was power crafted by the uh, 
whole mirror image on Tmot. This is another one that gives the mirror image. Um, if you have Tmot, just run Tmot. It's a free to play summon. You shouldn't really be trying to keep a premium option. Though this does give you a massive boost to all allies dodge rate if you have it. Proc, um, not worth keeping though. It's, it's something you can just get rid of. It has nice art though, but that's about it. Now we have Sukiyomi. Now this summon can be extremely good. All, all I need to mention is that slight chance for dark allies to gain auto revive. If this get a four star and that becomes guaranteed, it's a good summon. That's, that's all it needs to get. To give guaranteed auto revive goes pairs really well with near. Good enough. So um, I would keep this in case it gets a four star and it gets that ability. It also lowers light attack, which is really good. Um, better than normal attack lower, so not bad. Now we have a waste of a good art, um, Cerberus. They, ugh, can I complain for a minute? Why is Cerberus still not five stars? He's so old, man. He's so old. He's so old. Can we get a five star? Come on, bro. I can't even use the cute character I want to use. They can give me this summon and summon Boo Boo. As you can mention, this, this summon Boo Boo. This Bahama in the element. This is only 100. Bahama is 150. Even upon mass limit breaking this, it's only 120. Bahama has a good call effect. This does not have a good call effect. It's just like, just play Dark Magna. Use Bahamut, you get way more value. But God, it's good art though. Man, it's unfortunate. <laughs> That's unfortunate. And now we have Charel. Now this one, it's the dark Primark. It's not ticketable. I would definitely keep it very strong. Damage cap up, and that's about it really. It's very good. Um, I believe that's all of them, so we should be ending here. If you have any questions about things, leave them in the comments. If you like the video, leave a like. Uh, you may wanna subscribe for more content like this. I will probably end up doing the Sunstone video next in the future so look around for that uh thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next time goodbye